chapter new 31 warriors in winter magic treehouse series mary pope osborne morgan mission we are warriors jack and annie are about to meet the fiercest warriors of all they soldiers of the ancient rome and legion when the magic trio whisks them back to Roman army camp, they learn their mission be like warriors. That is easier than said. That is easier said than done. Roman soldiers are the best fighters in the world. When Jack and Annie find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time, they're in big trouble. Who will save Jack and Annie now? Prepare to be awed by this thrilling addition to the U New York Times number one best-selling magic treehouse series. Prologue. One summer day in Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, a mysterious treehouse appeared in the woods. It was filled with books. A boy named Jack and his sister Annie found the treehouse and soon discovered that it was magic. They could go to any time and place in history. All they had to do was point to a picture and wish to go there. While they were gone, no time at all passed back in Frog Creek. Jack and Annie eventually found out that the treehouse belonged to Morgan Le Fay, a magical librarian from the legendary realm of Camelot. Since then, they have traveled on many adventures in the magic treehouse and completed many missions for Morgan. On their journeys to New York and Texas, Jack and Annie learned great wisdom from two heroes of the resent past. They're now about to journey far back in time to learn from a third hero. Chapter 1. Way of the Eagle. Wake up, Jack. Jack opened his eyes. The light was dim outside his window. His Annie was standing by his bed. What's going on, he asked. I heard a weird sound outside, said Annie. And guess what I saw? What, said Jack. An eagle, said Annie. A huge eagle. It was sitting on top of the lamppost in our yard. No way, said Jack. Yes way, said Annie. I'll bet Morgan sent him. Jack sat up in bed. He threw off his covers and... I'm coming, he said. Hurry, we have to get home before Mom and Dad wake up. Meet you on the porch, said Annie. Jack climbed out of bed. He changed into his jeans, sweatshirt, and sneakers. He grabbed his backpack. Then he crept downstairs and went to the front porch. Annie was waiting in the chilly, damp air. Dawn was breaking. <coughs> there, she whispered. She pointed toward the lamppost in front of their house. An eagle was perched on top. It was dark brown except for a ring of gold and brown feathers around his neck he stared at them with piercing eyes oh man that's a golden eagle whispered jack the eagle spread its wings he rose into the early morning sky and flew toward the woods follow him said jack young man ran down the porch steps they crossed the yard and dashed into the frog creek woods after the eagle there said annie looking up she pointed to a bird gliding over the Frog Creek woods. Jack and Annie crossed the street. They hurried between the shadows until they came to the tallest oak. Whoa, said Jack. The eagle was perched on the roof of the magic treehouse. Yay, said Annie. You were right, said Jack. They climbed up the rope ladder and into the treehouse. Sunlight streamed onto the floor. It shined on two small wooden tablets. Next to the tablets was a stroll. A message from Merlin. Morgan, said Annie. She unrolled the scroll and read, Land by the Danu many years ago. Find a Roman legion. Camp disted with snow. A Roman legion camp, said Jack. Really? What's a legion, said Annie? A legion is a unit of an ancient Roman army, said Jack. A legion that had almost 6,000 warriors. The whole army had around 150,000 warriors and... Okay, got it, said Annie. And what's the Danube? It's a river that ran along the border of the Roman Empire, said Jack. That was almost 2,000 years ago. How do you know all this, said Jack, said Annie. My school project on... The Roman army, said Jack. Remember the modal 
of a camp I made, and I had to explain it to my class. Oh, yeah, I remember, said Annie. Rome had the best warriors in the world, said Jack. They defended the Roman Empire from over 500 years. They... Great, got it, said Annie. There's more here from Morgan. She read from the school again. You must each keep a journal. Use tablets of wax with a pen called a stylus. Write down the facts. So that's what these is, said Jack. He grabbed one of the wooden tablets. In the ancient times, people were on these. See the wooden carved with wax. He picked up a pointed reed and here's a stylus he put he lit a pen with no ink hold on to Danny listen to this write what you see write what you feel do what warriors do to make your words real how do we do what warriors do said Jack Roman warriors were the toughest guys on the planet they had years of training. Maybe Morgan sent us something to give us magic skills today. Like the baseball caps we wore in the Major League Bat Boys. They looked in the shadows corner of the treehouse. Jack saw the Pennsylvania book that would bring them home. Nothing here, said Jack. Morgan didn't even send us a research book. Don't worry, you know a lot. Uh, from your project, said Annie. Not enough, said Jack. Well, maybe Morgan wants us to learn more on our own, said Annie. Last verse. Give the silver coin to a hero in disguise. He will share with you his wisdom. Be home by moonrise. What silver coin, said Annie? They looked around the chest again. Jack spotted a black coin on the floor. It was about the size of a quarter. Maybe this, he said, picking up. That doesn't look like silver, Stanley. Silver turns dark over time, said Jack. You have to polish it. Okay, we can do that later. Let's go now, said Annie. How, said Jack. There's no research book to take us here. Hmm, said Annie. I have an idea. I'll just point to Morgan's words. She touched the rhyme. I wish we could go to a Roman legion camp on the Danube. A cry from... The eagle pierced the air. The wind started to blow. The trail started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 2. Ride on the black horse. The air was cold and bright. Brrr, I'm feels like winter. He asked Jack shivering. He could see his breath in the frosty air. We're, Rome, we're wearing Roman clothes. Too bad we're not warmer jack and nanny both wore wool caps wool with tunics and boots instead of a backpack jack had a leather pouch attached to his belt and he had a belt and a pouch too hey i'm dressed like a boy she said this sh- should be fun they looked out the window snow covered the ground sunlight sparkled on a frozen river that must be the Danube, said Jack. An eagle cried out, and he leaned out the window and looked to the right. Our eagle, she said, and that must be our Roman camp. Jack leaned out the window, too. He saw the eagle gliding toward a cluster of buildings surrounded by a high fence. Oh, man, it looks like my model, said Jack. Yep, and it's dusted with snow, just like in the Morgan's rhyme, said Annie. Let's go. Jack and Annie put their tablets and pen in their pouches, too. Then they climbed down the rope ladder. The sunlit on the snow was blindingly bright, but the air was bitter cold. Jack pulled his cape closer. The thick wool was warm and scratchy. Before we go any farther, should we write something in our journals he said good idea said danny they pulled out their writing tools watch said jack he pressed the pointed reed into the wax and wrote a w got it Stanley. but we should write small so we can fit everything jack wrote winter then you looked at annie's notes what are you writing he asked ride on the black horse she said where jack said looking around against the sun standing jack shielded his eyes against and looked out 
a bright horizon. A rider on a black horse was trotting over the frozen ground between the river and the camp. He wore a helmet and red cape. Oh no, said Jack. Should we climb back into the trails? Hi, Annie called, waving. The rider raised his hand in greeting. He trotted over to them. His face was mostly hidden by a helmet. Hey, old children, are you lost? He asked. Jack was relieved. The voice sounded friendly. Not lost, Annie. Actually, we wanted to visit the army camp. Have you family there? Asked the warrior. No, we just wanted to learn more about the Roman Legion, said Jack. We're keeping journals, said Annie. She held up her tablet and Silas. Indeed, said the man. You are the first children I've met who keep journals. We plan to write what we see and what we feel, said, Jack, said Annie. Ah, young visiting scholars, said the writer. Have you questions for me? Um, yes, said Jack. Why is the army camp here? Legion Jamin 14 is camped on the Danube to protect Rome's northern border, said the rider, to keep invaders from crossing the river. Who are the invaders, asked Danny. Anyone who wants to take away our freedom, said the rider, or destroy the Roman way of life. Do you know how we can get inside the camp, said Jack? Give the word of the day, said the rider. Mars the victor. Like Mars the planet, asked Danny. No, like Mars the... No, like Mars the god of war, said Jack. Oh, who's the Roman god of peace, said Danny. Pax is the god of peace, said the rider. His horse pawed the ground. Pax, I like Pax, said Danny. Tell the guard you plan to report on the legion's hard work, said the rider. Say you are visiting scholars under the command of the Empire Guard. Visiting scholars under the command of the Imperial Guard, said Jax. Got it. That sounds really official, he thought. The rider squinted at the rising sun. I must return to my station now, he said. Farewell, friends. The rider turned his horse and galloped toward the camp. Jack and Annie watched him pass through the gateway. Let's go, said Jack as they started walking toward the gate. He was nice, said Annie. Do you think he was an important officer in the Legion camp? No way, said Jack. He was just an ordinary army guy. He didn't have any plum on his helmet, and he didn't wear armor covered with metal like a centurion. Be glad he wasn't a centurion. Why? What's a centurion, asked Danny. Super strict commander, said Jack. They carry big sticks and mark their own men. That's mean, said Danny. They should learn to use their words instead. Jack laughed. Try to tell that to a centurion. As they drew close to the camp, a guard stepped out of the gatehouse. He wore full armor. He carried a spear and a red shield. Hey, old said Annie. Word of the day, the guard said in a deep voice. Mars the victor, said Annie. Jack cleared his throat and called out. We are visiting scholars under the command of the Empire Guard. We have come to write about the camp, said Annie. She held up her tablet and silence. We plan to spread the word about the Legion's hard work. The watchman lowered his spear. Welcome to the Legion Gemin uh, 14, he said, in the reign of the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Thank you, said Annie. She and Jack walked proudly past the guards. They passed through the gateway and entered the Roman camp. Chapter 3, Warriors Awake. Jack and Annie stood in the main road. The road passed through the center of the camp. It was lined with rows of wooden buildings. Where is everybody? asked Danny. I don't know, said Jack. The buildings look like barracks that 
nights where warriors sleep. Oh, so maybe they're still sleeping, said Annie. No chance, said Jack. Roman warriors get up before dawn. Maybe they went on a march. Where did our guy on the black horse go, said Annie. He disappeared, said Jack, looking around. I wish we had a research book. Don't worry, you know a lot, said Annie. Not enough, said Jack. Let's explore and see what we can find out, said Annie. Jack and Annie started down the stone road. They stopped at a flagpole. A red flag was waving in the wind. On the flag was a figure of a ram. Below the ram were two words, Legion Camp. The words were followed by three capital letters, XIV. Those letters stand for the numbers 14, said Jack. They're called Roman num rules. I actually knew that, said Danny. Our teacher taught us Roman numerals. Cool, said Jack. They both made notes about the flag. Hey, Danny, hear that noise? Jack listened. Sounds were coming from the far end of the camp. Let's check it out, he said. Jack and Annie hurried down the road. The sounds grew louder. Something is going on outside the walls, said Jack. Jack and Annie hurried past the rows of bar rocks until they came to the camp's rear gate. Mars the victor, Annie called to the guard. The guard waved them on and they stepped through the gate onto a huge frosty field. Oh man, said Jack. Warriors finally, said Annie. Hundreds of men were training on the field. They all wore armor and helmets. They were running, boxing, wrestling, throwing spears, and shooting arrows at targets. Not far away, a huge man was barking orders at the team of runners. He had a red plume on his helmet and metal on his armor, and he waved a big stick. Hey, a sentry, said Annie. Yep, said Jack. You gave a perfect description, said Annie. Double time, the sentry yelled. The runners ran twice as fast. They were wearing heavy armor with huge packs strapped to their backs. Remember how Arimus says we should do what warriors do, said Annie? Ha, said Jack. There's no way I could do what those guys are doing. Me neither, said Annie. But let's go closer to them and take some notes. Their feet crunched over the frozen grass as they headed toward the runners. Halt! A voice thundered. The tall, burly sentry had spotted them. He dropped his stick and pulled out his sword. Yikes, said Danny. Word of the day, the huge man shouted, striding toward them. Loud and clear. Mars the victor, Jack shouted. His heart was pounding. We're visiting scholars under the command of the Imperial Guard. We're taking notes on the Legion, said Annie, holding up her tablet. We want to report on your good work. The sentry and studied them, then he put away his sword. He pointed at the runners. Fighters in training, he roared. Best training in the world. Write it down. Jack Sands trembled as he took notes. What's in those packs, said Annie? Food, water, bedrolls, pants, hind, Mill, spade, axe, the sentry and shouted, plus 60 pounds of weapons, best weapons of the world. Write it down. Jack and Annie took notes. Do they train every day, asked Jack. Of course, said the sentry, and three times a month, they march 20 miles with full armor and packs. If one gets out of step, he is punished. If he deserts his commanders, he is slain. Those are the rules. Whoa, said Jack. Are there any women and soldiers, asked Danny? Certainly not, said the sentry. Females have no fighting skills. You don't know her, Aunt Molly, murmured Annie. Shush, said Jack. Well, she's a major in an army, said Annie, and she has a black belt and a car egg. The sentry didn't seem to hear her. She the severally trains there, he yelled, pointing across the field. Men on black horses were jumping over logs and fences. Jack looked for the rider on the black horse. Best horses in the world, said the sentry. Write it down. Jack and Annie wrote it down. 
What do warriors do when they're not training, said Danny. Clean stables, dig ditches, cook meals, said the sentry. Repair armor, make weapons, build roads. I read that Roman make great roads, said Jack. Best in the world, the man snapped. Write it down. Jack and Annie wrote it down. Jack could see Annie was trying to hide not to laugh. We must prepare now for the royal parade, said the sentry. The emperor arrived from Rome yesterday to review the legion. Good day. The sentry turned and strode back to the runners. Scary guy, said Annie. Typical sentry, said Jack, trying to sound calm. Let's get out of here. Wait, said Annie. What did you write? Jack read from his tablet. Winter rose of barracks, red flag with ram. Best weapons, best horses, best roads. Good to Nanny. But the rhyme says right where you feel. You didn't know that? Well, what did you write, said Jack? I wrote stuff like rider on black horse, friendly, like him, love the red shields. Oh, okay, said Jack. He pressed his stylus into his Rex hero. Nervous heart attack. Help! And you laughed when she read Jack's notes. It's true. My heart's pounding, said Jack. Let's go back inside, said Annie. She and Jack left the field and hurried back into the Legion camp. Chapter 4. No skills. Jack and Annie stopped on the main road. Okay, we still have to try to do what warriors do, said Annie. And don't forget the part about the silver coin, said Jack. Give the silver coin to the hero in disguise. Annie quoted. He will share with you his wisdom be home by moonrise i wonder who the hero is said jack what kind of roman soldier wears a disguise asked danny i don't know said jack i told you i don't know enough what's that said danny pointing to smoke rising from behind some on the barracks let's check it out said jack jack and danny walked down the path between the two rows of barracks the chilly air smelled of wood smoke and fish Soon they came to a warrior cooking in an area, wearing simple tunics and capes. Some of the men were grilling fish over campfires. Others were moving a loaf of bread from a stone oven. The oven looked like a giant beehive. Hey, we can do what he's doing, said Danny to Jack. We know how to bake bread. Yes, yeah, said Jack, but we have an electric oven. And we use four from the supermarket. Let's ask him how they do it, said Annie. Hail, she called to the bread baker. The man looked up, startled. Marta the victor, Jack said. We're visiting scholars. What about the legion's good work, said Annie. Are you the cook for the whole camp? The man laughed. No, it's my week to do the baking for my squad, he said. Jack leaned in. Eight to ten guys in the squad, he said. What is your squad eat? Annie asked the warrior. He was idolist. Cheese, beans, salted fish, olives, barely bread. How do you make your bread, said Jack. Each squad grains its own portion of grain, said the baker. He pointed to a small hand mill next to an oven. Cool, said Annie. Can we try it? The man nodded. There's a bit of grain in it now. Turn the handle to the grind it. Floor, w- flour will come out its spout. And you tried to turn the handle, but it wouldn't budge. You try it, she said to Jack. Jack pushed the handle as hard as he could. He pushed and pushed. Finally, a spoonful of flour came out of the spout. Your bread size will be the size of an olive, said the baker. Jack and Annie laughed. You should ask. Series for help so you don't starve, said the man with a smile. He returned to his work. Who's carries? And he asked as they walked away. Goddess of Grain, said Jack. Ancient Romans had goddesses and gods for everything. Oh, like the Greek mythology, said Annie. Right, said Jack. Gods and goddesses for sun and sea, storms, sleep, rainbows. Got it, got it, said Annie. The series is the goddess of grain she made a note 
There's smoke coming from over there too, said Jack. Let's go. They walked down the path to an open workshop. At a forage, a blacksmith was hammering a sword. Other men were make, making sandals, shields, and wagon wheels. The craftsmen were working so hard they didn't seem to notice Jack Nanny. An eagle, Annie whispered. She pointed to a craftsman adding a gold painting to a carved wooden eagle. That's the standard for a Roman legion, whispered Jack. That's a standard? What's a standard, asked Danny. It's a symbol for standing for the legion, said Jack. It's a great honor to carry the golden eagle. The person who does is called a standard bearer. Cool, said Danny. Hail, she called to someone behind Jack. Jack turned to look. The blacksmith was staring at them. Hail, the man said gruffly. Maybe he'll let us do something he's doing, said Danny, softly. We know how to hammer. Yeah, anyone can hammer, said Jack. He and he walked over to the blacksmith. We're visiting scholars, said Danny. We're learning about the Legion. May we try your what you're doing? Without a word, the blacksmith handed her the hammer. It was so heavy, and he fell to the ground. The blacksmith laughed. Oops, said Danny, getting to her feet. Your turn, she said to Jack. The hammer was lying on the ground. Jack tried to pick it up. He couldn't lift it higher than his knees. No can do. He said, we're wimps. We have no skills, said Danny. The blacksmith nodded. He took back his hammer. Pray to Vulcan, he said, and he went back to his working. Who's Vulcan, Danny asked Jack. The Roman god of fire and craftsmen, said Jack. Annie made a note. Maybe it's time to look for a hero in disguise, she said. Sure, said Jack, but first, let's check out that building. He pointed to a long building near the back gate. Maybe warriors are doing something in there that we can try it. Okay, said Annie. Jack and Annie put their riding tools into the, their pouches. Then they walked down the pathway to the open entrance to the building. They peeked inside. Oh, man, whispered Jack. The armory. Chapter 5. Get in line. Winter sunlight shone on metal helmets and jackets. It shone on broad helmets, swords, daggers, spears, and red and gold painting shields. No one's in here, said Danny. That's weird, said Jack. Or lucky, said Danny. She grinned at him. Finally, we can do what we're to do. What? You mean we should try on the armor, said Jack? Annie nodded. Everything will be too big, said Jack. Who cares, said Danny? No one will see us. Right, said Jack nervously. He wanted to try the, on the armor. Actually, it might be fun to not be too big. A Roman soldier had to be at least five feet to six Five feet six inches. A Roman soldier had to be at least five feet six inches. That's only five inches taller than me and eight, about eight inches taller than you. So if we go, let's do it, said Danny. Okay, said Jack. Quit before anyone shows up. Jack and Danny hurried through the wide entrance of the armory. They pulled off their capes and dropped them to the ground. Where do we start? Annie asked. They looked around at the shelves lined with body armor and helmets in the center of the room were weapons and shields and wooden stands upper body armor said jack crossing to a shelf with metal jackets the jackets were made of overlapping strips of iron this one looks pretty small he lifted the gray metal jacket off the shelf whoa it's heavy any held out her arms jack helped her slide the armor over tunic the jacket reached her knees help she said nearly sinking to the floor jack laughed you look like a cartoon character he said it's crazy heavy said Danny. want to take it off said jack not yet said Danny. put yours on jack chose one metal jacket for himself and slipped his arms into it the metal was freezing cold oh man how can warrior run or fight in this said jack it weighs a ton and they have to march really heavy backs on with their backs too, said Annie. And they carry shields to Jack. Huge shields. Unbelievable, said Annie. Now helmets to Jack. He studied the row of helmets. He picked one for himself and lowered it onto his head. Oh man, at least another 15 pounds, he said. Let me try one on, said Annie. Jack picked a helmet for Annie and lowered it onto her head. Help! She squeaked. I can hardly see her here. Annie helmet particularly covered her eyes her cheeks and mouth jack laughed i can hardly 
see either, he said. But I feel braver wearing this stuff, don't you? No, said Annie, I'm dying in here. Her voice was muffled. Okay, let's take everything off, said Jack. Suddenly voices and came from outside, running feet came from outside. Full armor, packs! No packs! A man shouted. Demper prayed began at high noon. Yikes, said Annie. Get out of the way, said Jack in a panic. He pulled Annie into the shadows. Warriors poured into the room. Jack recognized a, the cooks and craftsmen's among the others. Mars the victor, Annie shouted. Her voice was muffled inside her helmet. Quiet, said Jack. Belts, helmet, shield, someone bellowed. A stocky sentry and stood at the entrance of the armory. Oh no, said Jack. Another sentry. Double time, the rip man roared. The warriors quickly moved down the shelves, gathering metal jackets, helmets, and military belts. Everyone in line. Now, the sentry then shouted. The warriors grabbed weapons and shields. The armory was filled with loud voices and claiming metal. We have to get out of here, Jack said to Annie. We can't take everything off outside we can take everything off outside let's go i can't see you said annie i'll lead you said jack jack took annie's hand stumbling awkwardly in their heavy armor they moved with the, the warriors toward the entrance line up the sentry and bellowed single file the warriors almost knocked jack and annie over as they pop, spilled out the bright sunlight chapter six disastrous Jack pulled Annie to the side of the armory. We'll stay here till they're gone, he said. Annie nodded. The warriors were joining the parade line. The line stretched all the way to the main road. Prepare to march, the sentry and shouted. The horn sounded, and the warriors started jogging down the path. Come on, let's get out of this stuff, said Jack to Annie. Before we get caught... Jack yanked off his helmet. He unlaced his metal jacket and pulled it off. Whew, he said. He felt light enough to float through the air. Help, said Annie. Her helmet was off, but she was struggling to get her metal jacket off. Hold on, said Jack. Jack helped Annie unlace the jacket and take it off. There, great, said Annie. Now we better... Disaster! Someone shouted. Jack and Annie whirled around the... In the distance, a sentry was pointing to them. Oh, no, he must think we're soldiers trying to escape from the Legion, said Jack. Desertors, the sentry shouted again. Get them. Time to go, said Jack. Run, said Annie. She and Jack ran in the opposite direction of the sentry and the parade line. They zigzagged between barracks until they came to the main road. At the far end of the road, warriors were leaning up in the back of the gate. The front gate called Jack. They charged up the main road heading for the entrance of the camp. Halt! Jack looked back. Several horsemen were riding toward them. Halt! The leader horseman shouted. Keep going, Jack, shouted Danny. Double time! Jack and Annie ran as fast as they could. An arrow was past them. Stop, Jack, shouted Danny. Stop! Annie stopped. We have to explain, Jack said breathlessly. Turn around and put your hands up. Holding on... Their hands, Jack and Annie turned to face the horseman. The leader was a sentry, and he wore a crested helmet and a red cape. Mar the victor, Jack yelled. We're visiting scholars under the Imperial Guard. We come in peace. Pax, Annie shouted. Pax! The warrior on the horseback circled. Jack felt very small. The sentry leaned forward. What tribe are you from? He barked. Uh, Frog Creek, Jack blurted out. Frog Creek, the sentry, and said, there is no such tribe. Perhaps you come from across the river. From the north, said another warrior. They are very small. Did you cross the Danubis? Asked the entry in. Uh, actually, I don't know where Frog Creek is exactly in relation to your camp, said it, Jack. But it possibly, um... Who told you the secret word of the day? The sentry demanded. A rider on a black horse, said Annie. Where did he, did he see him? The man asked. Outside the camp. He was alone. Our warriors do not ride alone outside the camp. What did he tell you? Asked the sentry. He told us to make notes about the Roman legion, and that's what 
we've been doing all day, taking notes, said Jack. So a ride around the black horse gave you the secret pa daily password, said the sentry. Yes, sir, said Jack. And he told you to write about our camp, said the sentry. Yes, said Jack. And you don't know his name, said the sentry. He didn't tell us his name, but he, but he must be here somewhere, Stanny. He rode into the camp. He is here. He is here! He rode into our camp, the sentry turned to this horseman. An enemy spy is in our walls, he roared. No, not an enemy, said Annie. Not a spy! A horse, the horseman ignored her and they all began yelling at once. He is here! Rode into our camp! An enemy spy! Inside our walls! We must stop the parades, the sentry roared. The horseman started at their leader. Zeno, alert Emperor Aurelius, one of the horsemen nodded and galloped off. We will take the prisoners to the royal tent, said the guard. The emperor will decide their fate. Chapter 7, Lord Emperor Aurelius. March, the sentry in order. He pointed toward the back gate. With the sentry in leading them and the horsemen on either side of Jack Nanny started down the road. The mid day sun still shone bright but the cold wind had picked up jack shivered from the cold and from fear he'd read about roman emperors some were ruthless and cruel some were truly insane all of them got rid of their enemies one way or another i wish we could find the black guy in on the horse, Jack said in a low voice, before they, before they find him. I'm sure he wasn't a spy today. Me too, said Jack. But who was he? And where did he go? Quiet, a horseman yelled. The sentry led them through the back gate, then stepped out onto the training field. Oh, man, whispered Jack. On the field, a whole legion stood in formation. Six thousand armored warriors were lined up in a perfect rows. Their warriors were on as still as statues. Each held a red and gold shield with his left hand and a spear with his right. Trumpeters stood near the head of the parade. In front of them was the warrior carrying the legion red flag. In front of him was a man carrying a pole with a statue of a golden eagle on top. To the imperial tent, the sentry in order to Jack Nanny. He pointed to a large red tent on the far side of the field. A cluster of guards stood around the entrance. No time, the sentry said. As Jack Nanny hurried toward the tent, Jack grew even more scared. And he seemed scared too. Have you read about Roman empires? She asked Jack. A little, said Jack. What do we, What do you learn, said Annie. They're okay, said Jack. Don't worry. I'm not worried, said Annie. I know we'll be fine. Right, said Jack. Annie never gives up hope, he thought. He liked that. When they reached the entrance of the tent, the sentry dismounted. He gave... He, we have come to, set, to see the emperor, he said to the guards. We have captured two spies. Yes, your messenger told us, said the guard. He is with the emperor now. You may enter. The guard pulled back the flap of the red tent. The sentry led Jack Nanny inside. It was warm inside the tent. He, the, a fire was burning in a small iron snow, stove. Tall candles cast shadows on silky curtains and woven carpets. Statues of maps and were everywhere. The messenger Zeno stood at attention. Near him, a man sat on a heavy wooden chair sat on the platform. He wore a long purple cloak with a gold clasp on at his shoulders. His light brown hair and beard was curled. The sentry bowed before the man. My lord, Empress Aurelius, he said. Hail, Junius, said the emperor. 
Our camp has been invaded by spies, my lord, said the eccentric. I have captured two of and I believe there is a third hiding among us. Yes, your messenger has warned me, said the emperor. He narrowed his eyes at Jack Nanny. His piercing gaze reminded Jack of something. Was it the golden eagle on the lamppost at dawn? I'm I'm sorry, my lord Aurelius, stammered Jack. We'd like to explain. Before Jack could go on, Nanny burst out laughing. Oh, wow, she said. What, said Jack? I can't believe it, said Nanny. She gave the emperor a big grin. Hey, old friend, has any lost your mind, Jack wondered. Stop, what's wrong with you? And he whispered. Don't you get it, she said. What, said Jack? It's him, said Nanny, our guy. The rider on the black horse. He's not a spy, he's the emperor. Jack stared at the emperor. He couldn't remember what the rider's face had looked like. Most of it was him covered by his helmet. Genius, you and Zeno may leave now. There is no danger of spies in our camp, said the emperor. The sentry and the messenger looked confused, but they bowed and left the tent. The emperor looked at Jack Nanny. Hey, old fellow scholars, he said. Are you lost? Chapter 8 silver coin. Jack caught his breath. Emperor Aurelius was their guy. He couldn't believe it. No, not last sitting, smiling. We were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The armory, Jack explained. So I hear, said the emperor. When I first met you, I thought you must live nearby certain none. But now I do not think that so. Where is your home? Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, asked Danny. Beyond the Danube, said Jack. Where are your horses? The emperor asked. We left them uh, on the other side of the bank, said Jack. Yes, we walked over the ice, said Danny. But we're... But we're definitely not invaders or spies, said Jack quickly. I promise we want to learn about the Roman legion just for our own sake. I believe you, said the emperor. When I spoke with you on my ride, I knew you were honest and truthworthy. Do you ride alone every morning? And yes, when I can, said the emperor. I like to look closely at the world around me and think my own thoughts. We like to do that too, said Annie, and you write down your own thoughts. In fact, that added Jack. We tried to do what that today when we wrote in our journal, said Annie. Ah, uh, yes. And what did you write? Asked the emperor. I wrote about the weather, said Annie. I made notes about the Roman gods. I know. I even wrote a poem about two of them. Really, I should very much like to hear it, said the emperor. Sure, said Annie. She quoted from memory. The weapons of Mars are heavy and bare, but the piece of Pax is lighter than air. Uh, the emperor nodded. Lovely, he said. He looked at Jack. I wrote about the flag and warriors training, said Jack, and they wrote about making bread and swords. Telling him what he wrote about having a heart attack, said he, smiling. I was a little nervous, said Jack. I wanted to make my sister laugh. Then Emperor nodded. So you both write honestly from poetry and humor, and you study the world closely. We try, said Danny. Those are useful and horrible qu qualities, said the Emperor. You are simple, brave, and honest. With training, you can excellent worker warriors. Not me, said Danny. I don't like to fight. Sometimes you must fight for the right thing, said the Emperor. Like what, said Jack. Freedom and justice, said the emperor. Truth. Truth. Are you ever scared, asked Jack. Ah, yes, said the emperor. But if I look deep within myself, I often find hidden source of strength. That makes sense, said Danny. If I pretend to be a very brave person, I suddenly find that I am one, said the emperor. That makes sense, said Jack. I felt brave for a moment when I put on the warrior armor. In life, we wear many disguises, said the emperor. I sometimes feel I'm wearing the disguise of a powerful emperor. 
Annie dashed. The sky, she whispered to Jack. Hero of the sky, silver coin. Oh man, yes, breathed Jack. He took out the black coin. We want to give this to you, he said, handing the coin to the emperor. We think it's made of silver, said Annie. The emperor looked closely at the coin. He crossed to the table with jars and poured some liquid onto the a cloth. He rubbed the coin, polishing on it. Soon the silver coin shone brightly. The Emperor held the coin close to the lantern and studied it. He turned to Jack Nanny with a look of amazement. Where did you guys get this coin? He asked. Um, we we found it in some woods, said Annie. Why, is there something wrong with it? Said Jack. The coin is an honor of me, said the Emperor. Its engraving shows me with my warriors on a frozen river. It looks as if we are having a great victory on the, the movie the newbie do you remember said jack confused i do not said the emperor in a hushed voice because this battle has not yet happened look at the date he handed the coin to jack jack nanny said the roman numerals it says 157 said jack indeed said the emperor but we are not in the year of 157. We are on the year of 156. Oh, said Annie. Well, that doesn't make sense. No, unless the emperor looked at Jack and Annie with the golden e eagle eyes. It is a coin from the future. Chapter 9. March. From the future, said Jack and Annie looked at each other. How could this be? That How could that be, said Annie? That's amazing. Them. She said to the emperor. Unbelievable, said Jack. I do not understand, said the emperor. Is it a sign from the gods, a gift from Mars? Perhaps it means the legion should comfort the enemy on the frozen Danube. Take them by surprise and stop their invasion. Sounds like a good plan to me, said Jack. It does, said Annie. The emperor looked at them with wonder. I do not know what to say to you, he said. I would like to talk farther about your country, your tribe. Perhaps you can stay a while longer with the Legion. I feel you may have a lot to teach us. I'm afraid we can't. We have a family back home, said Annie. We really need to get home by moonrise, said Jack. Ah, said the Emperor. I understand, but I am sorry to hear that. The moon rises early in the winter. The sentry and Junius entered the tent. My Lord Aurelius, the warriors are waiting. Shall I cancel the parade? Of course not, said the Emperor. My honored guest, Jack Nanny, will march with you. We will. Oh no, thought Jack. Wait here, said the Emperor to Jack to get Nanny. He stepped outside to talk with Junius. I hope he doesn't want us to carry shields and weapons, Jack said to Nanny. Or wear armor, said Nanny. No way, said Jack. We need an excuse. The Emperor returned. Go with Junius, he said to Jack and Nanny. We will show you what to do. Oh, said Jack. Before he could think of an excuse, Junius beckoned for Jack and Nanny to follow him. The sentry led them out of the tent and... They walked silently with him back to the parade line. Jack's heart raced. We can't march, he thought. We're too small. We're not strong enough. To th at the field, the legion was still standing in the formation, waiting for the order to march. Junius walked over to the standard beard and, and flag bearer and turned to Jack and Annie. The emperor has ordered the, that the two of you shall carry the eagle standard and the flag, which one of you wishes to carry the standard he asked oh man thought jack he knew this was the highest honor of a roman warrior could have you should carry it he said to annie no you she said you deserve it more said jack he looked at the sentry and annie is very brave and she never gives up hope the standard bearer handed the eagle standard to annie oh wow thanks said annie she held the pohai and smiled the gold eagles wings shone in the moonlight the flag bearer handed jack the flagpole he raised it beside the eagle with standard and the red flag with the ram with the ram flat in the winter wind trumpet sounded you are the lead of the legion once around the fields junior said to jack nanny all the soldiers will follow you. March! Jack and Annie marched around the field with all the legions, jamming 
XIV following them. Andy carried the Eagle standard. Jack carried the flag with the ram. They were followed by trumpet players, who were followed by centurions, who were followed by thousands and thousands of Roman soldiers. Jack and Andy returned to the emperor. They gave the standard and the flag to Junius. Well done, said the emperor Junius. I know you must leave us now. I will ride with you as far as the riverbank. The emperor gestured to a warrior standing beside a beautiful white horse. The horse had a red blanket draped over its back. The warrior led Jack and Andy to the horse and helped them climb on. Jack took the reins. Emperor Aurelius mounted the black horse and they both started toward the eagle gate. Jack gripped the reins and Annie held on to Jack. The white horse carried them down the main road past the armory, past the rows of barracks, and out through the gate of the Roman legion camp. Chapter 10. Hail Home. Not far from the Danube River was the Emperor Dis Mountains. He helped Jack Nanny down from the white horse. Thank you for letting me carry Lord Aurelius to Nanny. You need not call me that outside the camp, said the emperor. You can call me Marcus. Thanks for helping us, Marcus, said Jack. You're welcome, said Marcus. I hope you learned about the Roman Legion camp today. We did, said Jack. You guys are amazing, said Annie. We wrote a lot in our journals. The emperor smiled. Good, he said. I tell few people this, but I keep a journal myself. Really, said Annie, what sort of things do you write about? Marcus paused for a moment. Perhaps I will share some of the thoughts with you, he said. He pulled out his journal out of by two red. Dwell on the beauty of life. Watch the stars and see yourself running with them. It sounds like poetry, said Jack. I love it, said Annie. Then perhaps you will like this too, said Marcus. I have begun a list of small things that have a special beauty for me. He read from his journal again. Fresh bread, ripe figs, wheat bending in the field, the face of a lion, the beauty of an old ingle in men and women, a smell of wood smoke. Marcus looked at them almost shyly. That's an amazing list, Marcus said Jack. A beautiful list, Nanny. Thank you, said Marcus. He sighed. I must leave you now and dun me Emperor Disguise again. There are battles still be- to be won. Good luck, Marcus, said Jack. The Emperor mounted his black horse. Jack handed the reins of the right white horse. Farewell, my friend, said Marcus. I bid you safe travel. Thank you, said Jack. We should keep writing, Marcus, said Danny. Your journal is really good. The emperor smiled again and raised his hand. Then he turned and led the white horse back to the, toward the camp. Let's go, Jack, said Danny. They hurried to the tree house in the hidden in the trees. Look, said Danny. She pointed. Jack saw the golden eagle perch tie on the branch. Hi there, he said. Then he and Danny climbed up the rope ladder. They looked out the window together. They watched the emperor pass through the front gate and into the camp. The eagle cried out from above and flew into the darkening winter sky. It's time for Marcus to be the ruler of Roman Empire again, said Danny. Yep, said Jack. He took his tablet out of his pack and put it on the floor of the shales. Time for us to go to Frog Creek again, said Annie. Right, said... Oh, Time for us to be Frog Creek kids again. Right, said Annie. Then she set the tablets beside Jack's. We'll leave these for Morgan. Jack picked up the Pennsylvania book. He pointed to the photo of Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow the trail. Started to spin the spin faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Hail home, said Jack. Pax, said Annie with a sigh. They were wearing their own clothes again. The sun was rising over the woods. Birds were singing. I hope Morgan liked our notes, said Jack, glancing at the tablets. I think she will, said Annie. We should head home now and hope and hop and back into bed. Yep, said Jack. Pair, pretend to wake.
can't wake up when mom calls us for breakfast. I hope dad makes blueberry pancakes to Danny. Best in the world to Jack right down to Danny. They laughed, then climbed down the rope ladder and started through the wood. Jack felt the chilly morning breeze. I'm glad we don't have to be a Roman warrior, she said. Me too, said Danny. But you know what? It's weird. What, said Jack. Besides traveling through time and space and the magic treehouse and spending the day with Roman Legion camp, Danny laughed. No, seriously, said Jack. It's weird that m most important worry, Roman worries of all time made a list of small things in, in nature, like beauty. Yeah, said Jack. Not what you expect. I think we might be the wisdom we were supposed to learn today. Right, said Jack. So, what would you add to your list, said Danny? Oh, um, maybe like Jack looked around, sun rays slanted between the trees. Fiddleheads, ferns, said Danny. Leaves dancing in the breeze, said Jack. That dove cooing, said Danny. The eagle's eye, said Jack. They, they came to the other woods and headed down the sidewalk. The black cat hiding in the bushes, said Danny. The Johnson's pug on the porch, said Jack. Hi, pickles, said Danny, loud in a loud whisper. Dandelions growing in the crack in the sidewalk, said Jack. They came out. To, they came to their house. They climbed their stairs and crept inside and tiptoed upstairs. See ya, and he whispered, they whispered to each other and slipped into their rooms. Jack glanced back at the, back, Jack put back his pajamas on. Before he got into bed, he grabbed one of the, the book on his bookshelf and got in the bed. He looked in the index and found Marcus Aurelius. He found the right page in red. Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor from one, 161 to 180. He was a skillful military leader, but he is the best known as a deep thinker who sought truth and wisdom. He recorded his private thoughts in a journal called Middle Oceans. The journal was of Marcus Aurelius is still read more than one in 1800 years after his death. Below the page was a quote from Marcus Aurelius. When you arise in the morning, think what you've pursued or privilege. It is to be alive, to think, to enjoy, to love. No problem, Jack whispered. He smiled as he put the book back in his shelf. He climbed into the bed, closed his eyes, and waited for his mom to call him for breakfast. Pax. Turned the page for a sneak peek. Magic Trios, Fat Tracker, Warriors. Magic Chess, War Fact Tracker, Warriors in Winter, Mary Pope Osborne, and Nayley Boat Poise. Ramson 2, His Blue Crown and the Lion. Ramson 2 is called the Ramson the Great because he is, was the powerful warrior who won many battles for Egypt. He was also a great pharaoh who made the country stronger. There were paintings of ramps and two wearing a double crown, the red and white. The crown were, were a smooth that ruled all of Egypt. Ramses too led his men into battle wearing a blue crown. There were stories that he also brought his pen lois along the look. Maybe. It was an oslet. What do you think? What do you think? Two ancient Greek warriors. Ancient Greeks had over a thousand cities, states in the city of the United Athens were one of the most po powerful. Around 1500 BCE, Athens created the first democracy and the democracy people can vote. The United States borrowed some ideas for AIDS from democracy from Greece. Athens produced powerful art buildings, poetry, plays, and stories. The Greeks held the first Olympic Games almost 3,000 years ago, said Annie. Alexander spreads Greek culture. Alexander, the son of King Philip of Macedonia, 
was one of the greatest warriors ever. He lived to over 2,000 years ago. Philip ruled all of Greece. The famous Greek philosopher Arstra Aristotle was one of the Alexander's teachers. Alexander was 20 when he became the king in 336 BC. He, he sat on the conquer more land for 13 years. He and his army, about 1,500 soldiers, took over the lands and sh that stretched from Greece to India. Alexander brought Greek ideas, arts, and costumes to all the lands to of he conquered. Alexander never lost a battle, and he became known as Alexander the Great. He, he named 70 cities after himself, and he and one after his horse, Bucephalus. To, to say it better, if you can't say it, bu seth a -lis. Alexander died of a fever when he was only 31. Next time, I'll be reading. Um, Civil War on Sunday, Mary Pope Osborne. Cannon fire. That's what Jack and Annie would hear when the magic chairs whisked them back to the time of the American Civil War, where the meet a famous nurse named Claire Barton and do their best to help wounded soldiers. It is their hardest journey in time yet, and the one will make the most difficult on their own lives. Find out why. In Magic Treehouse book number 21, Civil War on Sunday, what do kids and parents and teachers say in books and Magic Treehouse books? Look on the opening page. So, see you next time. Okay, so, bye.